All of us parents wonder whether we're doing right by our kids. Are we good parents, too lenient, too strict? And how will our actions affect their futures? Now, the whole Tiger Mom debate has brought those questions front and center. And this morning, we're going to hear from a child specialist who might be described as the anti-Tiger Mom. Psychologist Sue Engel has a new book out called Red Flags or Red Herrings, Predicting Who Your Child Will Become. And she joins us now. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Happy birthday. Thank you. You know, I read the, I, I, I read the book over the weekend, and I have to say... It was a great relief. Oh, good. Like, your core <laughs> message is relax. Yes, yes, that's right. I mean, I think that ti the Tiger Mom book captures something that's pervading our society, which is a sense that there are all these things you have to do just right to get a child to come out just the way you want them to be. And the fact is, there's no point to that. Children are influenced by many forces out of your control. A lot of who they are is set from early on, and you'd be much better off relaxing and enjoying the relationship with them than trying to shape them in a particular and, way. And, and letting them be children. And I know that we, we could see it with our two daughters from literally the second we met them. Right. You know, one was fiery and intense, and one was like calm and, 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 and happy in a different way. And that you could see their core personalities, at least in the first eight and five years, haven't changed all that much and that's pretty common. It's very common. So many of the most essential characteristics of a person are shaped very early in life. They're set early in life either by virtue of their genetics or by virtue of their early experiences. And once those characteristics are in place, there's not much you can do to change them. Now sometimes that's good news. If your kid is smart, if your kid is outgoing, if your kid is generally happy, you sigh this big sigh of relief, my kid's going to be fine. If your kid has certain problems, or um, or difficulties, those things too are probably set early in life. You can help with those, but you can't completely change your child. But, you know, to, to take the tiger mom side in one respect for a, a second, there is something to the idea of hard work and learning to that if if you, if you work hard and practice something like the violin, right. there's going to be a payoff. Down yeah, the there is. So I talk about that a lot in my book, about the power of motivation and perseverance in success. But it's not the case that you have to force that on your child. I would guess that Amy Chua's children are successful not because she made them take lessons, but because she herself is very hardworking, because she's ambitious, because that was the environment they grew up in. Kids want to be like their parents, and they model themselves after their parents. So what you do in your own life, how you you behave, who you are, is a lot more influential on your child than the rules you And then you when set. you get a signal from your kids that they like something, that they're interested in something like painting or the piano or whatever, encourage it. Absolutely. So one of the things that we forget in this crazy rush to make children come out in a certain way is that one of the most powerful characteristics is your interest in things. What you love to do is what you'll be good at. That's what will make you happy. That's what will help you develop a happy life. And um, parents would do a lot better to pay attention to what interests their children, what kind of child they have, rather than trying to move them in a different direction. You write so much about the red herrings, which are the things <laughs> parents shouldn't yeah. worry about. But, but there must be some red flags. There are red flags. Usually it's not an incident. It's a sequence of incidents, something that comes up again and again in different settings. A kid who has trouble controlling their impulses over and over again, can't control their rage or can't delay gratification, that might be a red flag over time. A child who's sad a lot of the time, that might be a red flag or a series of red flags. On the other hand, some children aren't just a bundle of joy. They're not ebullient. That doesn't mean they're really sad. It means they have a different way of That's expressing their joy. Are. That's just who they are. So your bottom line advice to parents? Remember that raising children is not a job. It's a relationship. It's one that goes both ways. It involves a lot of different dynamics and forces. Enjoy being a mom or a dad. That's the best gift you can give your kids. That is great advice. It's a great book. Thanks. Susan Nagel, thanks very much. You're welcome.